All right, third question. As usual, there's uh, corrections. I'm gonna put in the pinned comment um, or in the description below. A machine at manufacturing company is programmed to fill shampoo bottles such that the amount of shampoo in each bottle is normally distributed with mean 0.6 liters and standard deviation 0.04 liters. Let the random variable A represent the amount of shampoo in liters inserted in the bottle by the filling machine. Okay. Bottles considered to be underfilled if it has less than 0.5. So it's normally distributed. That's an important factor. Less than 0.5 liter. Determine the probability that a randomly selected bottle shampoo will be underfilled. So I want the probability that A is less than 0.5. Okay. And so for normal ones, I always draw a picture. Okay. And I say like, well, the mean is 0.6. Standard deviation is 0.04. And I want to put 0.5 over here. And I want the area to the left. So I'm going to use normal CDF. Okay. And let's pull up my normal CDF calculator here or my calculator. Let's clear distribution, normal CDF. And I'm going to say the lower is negative one E 99 because I'm going to the left. Upper is 0.5 mean is 0.6 standard deviation is 0.04. And that is, um, so I might put the parameters on here by the way. So let's, let's pin that. So mean is 0 0.06 standard deviation was, um, 0 0.04 lower bound was negative one E 99 upper bound was equal to 0 0.5. And I got a probability of 0 0.0062. Okay. Awesome. Oops. Okay. After the bottles are filled and placed in boxes of 10 bottles per box, and after the boxes are, bottles are placed in the boxes, several boxes are placed in the crate for shipping in a beauty supply warehouse. The manufacturing company's contract with the beauty supply warehouse states that one box will be randomly selected from a crate. If two or more bottles in the selected box are underfilled, the entire crate will be rejected and sent back to the manufacturing company. The beauty supply warehouse manager enters the probability that the crate shipped to the warehouse will be rejected. Assume that the amounts of shampoo in the bottles are independent of each other. Okay, so we have 10 bottles in a box. And if I randomly pick a crate and two of those 10 bottles or more are underfilled in the entire. So that is, so out of 10 bottles, if two or more are underfilled, then we have a problem. So I want to know what's the probability I would have, let's say X is the number of bottles that are underfilled. I want the probability that X is greater than or equal to two. I want two or more bottles that are underfilled. Now this is a binomial distribution. I would always identify the distribution and say here, the number of trials is 10. And the probability that they're underfilled is what we got in um, the previous one was 0 0.0062. I got a really small number. Did I do that right? I don't know. That seems really small to me. Let me double check what I put in here. Okay. Sorry, I just kind of, it just kind of bothers me how small that number is. It just seems weird. Upper is 0 0.5, 0 0.6. 0 0.04 and 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Well, so this is like what? That's like 0.1 away. That's like two standard deviations away. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty small. Okay, it's very unlikely. This is a binomial distribution. Now for, um, if you're gonna use binomial CDF, you can make this one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to one. So the probability that X is greater than or equal to two. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> they, I, I'm already doing the probability, but they actually only ask it. So binomial distribution, this is, this is part one. And this is the variable of interest is the number of bottles underfilled, uh, in a crate, in a crate, in, uh, in a box, not in a crate. Yeah. So that's my variable. That's my distribution. Um, you always want to say the distribution. You need to say the parameters associated with the distribution. So you need to say N is 10. P is 0 0.062, 0, 0, 0.062. Determine the probability. And so here we would do the probability that X is greater than or equal to two. This is what I was talking about. Probability X, one minus probability X is less than or equal to one. Why do I do the less than or equal to? Because that's like how the normal, that's how like binomial CDF works. If you have one that does an upper and lower bound, you can certainly do that. But binomial CDF, 10 trials, 0 0.0062. The X value is one. 
and that, that so th so this one when I do this calculation here that's the probability that is less than or equal to one and then I do one minus that wait no I did that wrong uh, P is the number of boxes that are underfilled wait why did that come out so small it should be really large very likely that it's zero I do one minus that um, sorry, I'm X is the number of bottles underfilled 0 0.0062 is the probability that's underfilled. So yeah, um, let me look at that again. Did I do that right? Ten trials X value. That's the probability of success. So maybe I should do one less than that or um, the probability that one is underfilled is should be really small. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I just had messed up my calculator when I I just re-entered it again. Um, uh, I think because last time I had like I had like this other thing in here. I don't I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, I redid it again. So that is point nine nine nine. So then I do one minus that. So that was just a, a goof entry on my calculator. Um, I was going to say that it didn't really make sense. It should have been a really, really low probability because it's very unlikely that they're underfilled. So you want to do one minus that because the binomial CDF gives you this one here. So this is the binomial CDF. And so I got one minus 0 0.9983 and that gives me 0 0.0017. Okay, so that's the probability. Okay. Oh, I didn't write it down here. 0 0.0017. Okay. Um, if your binomial CDF allows you to put a range, you could put two to 10. Notice that I put less than or equal to one because it's like, I want it to be one or zero underfilled bottles basically, right? And so um, CDF always includes the end point. So you can't use two here. You have to put one for it to work correctly. Okay, but if you have a, a more fancy calculator that gives you a lower bound and upper bound, you could just put two and 10 as your lower and upper bound and that would work also. So to reduce the number of crates rejected by the beauty supply warehouse manager, the manufacturing company is considering adjusting the programming of the filling machine so the amount of shampoo in each bottle is normally distributed with a mean 0.56 liter standard deviation to 0.03 liter. Would you recommend the manufacturing company use the original programming of the filling machine or the adjusted programming of the milling machine provide a statistical justification? So this has to do with the probability now. So we've changed it now. The mean is 0.56. And again, we want to worry about it being underfilled again, right? I want to know, but but it's like less spread, so it's sort of like, hey, what is that? So let's just look at the probability. What's the probability that you would underfill, right? Again, you would use a normal, normal distribution, right, with mean equal 0 0.56, standard deviation at 0 0.03. We're going to use a lower bound of negative 1 E99 and an upper bound of 0 0.05. So we're going to basically do the exact same thing we did in the first probability calculation, but now we're going to say lower is that, upper is um, point, not 0.5, point it's not 0 0.05, 0 0.5. And then we're gonna say the mean is 0.56, and then we'll say the standard deviation is 0 0.03. Now, why are we doing this? Because if this probability is greater, then we're gonna have a problem. So this is 0 0.0228, and I would say um, no, I would not recommend, because the probability of underfilling of underfilling has increased from and I would put the numbers you're comparing because they want to just say like you know I would be specific 0.0062 to 0 0.0228 so there's a more likely chance it'll be rejected there is a higher chance of the shipment being being rejected. Okay, so that's all you're really looking at. It's just the higher probability. That's the statistical justification. All right.